Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to do a review and install for the all-new Cena Smart HJC 20B Bluetooth device. For the spring of 2020, Cena and HJC partnered up to introduce two new Bluetooth devices that are meant to be used with select HJC helmets where you have a direct integration. That list of helmets includes the all new ARFA 11 Pro carbon helmet, okay, just the carbon helmet itself at this time. The all new ARFA 70 ST carbon, the all new ARFA 90 S modular, the all new I-10, which is a Snell full face helmet, retails from 134 to 152. The F-70 full face with a drop down inner shield that we're showing you here today. And then the I-90 modular helmet. The difference between the two units is going to be Bluetooth type, range, talk time, and features. What I'm going to encourage you to do is for all that nerd stuff, you look at the product specs for both of the units and decide which is best for you. This is the higher end of the two. It has more features. I've tested this unit only inside, not out riding, and compared it to the 10B. What I found was the sound quality with this one was a little bit better with the music. When I say a little bit, it didn't seem mar markedly better to me, but it was a little bit better. The call quality, I made a couple of different phone calls with this unit and the 10B. The users on the other end both said the quality was good. You could tell it wasn't quite as good as talking directly on the phone, but it was more than clear enough. Okay, so I noticed a little bit of a difference, and it's really going to come down to which unit is right for you. Refer to the spec sheets. We have both of those on the website because there is more than a 2x price difference between the two. In this video, I'm going to show you how to completely install and pair the 20B in your new HJC helmet. Okay, here we go. Let's dive in. Cena has been doing this a long time, so know you're getting a quality device, right? And all that they've done is just design something that is supposed to integrate directly into the HJC helmet. We reviewed the current crop of HJC helmets. They have a lot of new models right now within the last week or so. And we showed all the channeling and stuff that is molded into the internals of these helmets to allow for this installation. I've already installed this unit in this helmet and then the 10B in an I-10. And I gotta tell you, HJC did a great job, maybe even just a little bit better of a job than Showy did with this integration. The installs, when you're done, are super clean and the units work really nice. First place you should go is your instructions. This packet is thick as a brick, okay? Man, we got it all in there, all different languages. I'm assuming you need English, just like I did. These are new age instructions because people don't read words anymore. They're a bunch of little pictures and I'll be straight with you. I didn't find this to be super helpful, so I just kind of dove into it myself. And what I'm going to show you in this video is the process I used, and then I'll give you a close-up look at the end result I got, which I would say is very strong. You follow these steps, you're going to get the same end result I did. Pairing. Pairing at first was a little bit frustrating using this, okay? Then I discovered... It worked best if you had the helmet on and that you need to hold the button down and you hear the voice prompts. And as it goes through the menu and it gets to the configuration menu, then from there it becomes very clear what you need to do. So we'll show you that entire pairing process, which is key. The unit comes complete with a USB cable that's going to allow you to charge this. You can just hook it to your, your PC, right? Just charge it up or like a, you know, a power, a USB block to charge the unit up. The unit stays installed in the helmet once you've got it in there. It is firmware upgradable, okay? There is a web address that you can go. It's located here in the instructions. They actually typed that out. It wasn't just a picture, right? You go to that address, you download a little app onto your PC or your laptop. You're gonna have that there. It's gonna allow you to upgrade the firmware. 
with this device. I didn't make any firmware upgrades. I just did the install, went through the pairing process and used it. So I would expect for most people, you'll just be able to install it, pair, and off you go. Okay, let's get all of our pieces and parts ready. Here is the unit itself. This is going to ship with both a boom mic and a button mic. For the full face helmets, you're just going to use the button mic. You do not need the boom mic. That is for modular applications only. Let's go ahead and get our button mic out. There are two extended length fasteners as well as an Allen key. Show you where we use all that. And then you'll find another package that has two speaker pads if you choose to use them. I didn't really find the need to do it. And then two styrofoam pads, or foam pads, I'm sorry, for the boom mic if you're running a modular helmet and you're gonna use the boom mic. There is also a little Velcro patch, a circular patch, that allows you to install the button mic in the full face helmet. I've already stuck that into the channel inside the helmet when I did my test install. Okay, so you're gonna need to locate that and install it in the spot for the button mic. We'll show you that as we get going with the install. Anytime I'm gonna service the helmet, the first thing I like to do is I like to remove the shield off the helmet completely. You don't wanna be scratching the shield while you're handling it. So even for a Bluetooth device, I would recommend removing the helmet shield on this F70. It is held on with a Phillips screw on either side. So it's pretty simple. Put that to the side. I have a foam helmet service ring here that I'm gonna use. If you don't have something like this at home, just grab a towel and set it on top of your work table so you don't scratch the helmet. Cheek pads need to be removed. Get your fingers behind the back of the cheek pad in between the internal EPS. There are three snaps. Wiggle your fingers around, put a little pressure, release the snaps. There's one at the top and one on either side towards the bottom of the helmet. Once you've released the snaps, I want you to grab the cheek pad here towards the front. I want you to pull out while supporting the helmet. There is one tab here towards the front and another one here towards the back. Kind of wiggle and pull at the same time. Repeat that process for the other cheek pad. As we showed you in the helmet breakdown videos, HJC has molded in all the channeling for the wiring, for the speakers, for the microphone. So this is really a direct integration that gets you a really clean end result. Once you have your cheek pads out, let's grab that Allen key and you're gonna remove the little closeout panel that comes from the factory on this helmet. Underneath this panel, there is a little pocket that accepts the body of the unit, the main body. Once you have these out, kind of pull on the plate like so, slide it out. Now let's grab the unit. This is available in two different colors. The higher end, the 20B, is available in the matte black that we're showing you, as well as a white color. So if you have a helmet that is finished around the bottom in white, you can get the white unit. Otherwise, I think matte black is going to be the most popular option. Route the wires so that the speakers and the microphone harness are inside the helmet. Slide the unit into the pocket. Push down a little bit, take a look. You can see the threads for the threaded inserts that are gonna retain this. Let's get the first one started. And put the second one in. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on that unit itself so it's seated. And then I'll run these down. 
once I have them all the way down, I'll put about another quarter turn on it to make sure the unit is secured. This is not a high tech, or I'm sorry, high torque fastener, okay? You don't want to go crazy on this thing and pull the insert out of the helmet. So once they're seated, right around a quarter turn, maybe a little bit less, right there. That's more than enough. That is certainly not going to fall out of there. We'll start on the microphone side. Let's get our button mic out, kind of stretch your wiring harness out like so. And now we're ready to connect that to the unit and begin the install in the helmet. Okay, let's grab the button mic and the connector from the unit for the button mic. Slide them together like so. Push until you hear an audible click, letting you know that it's secured to the harness. From here, I want to put this in position. Remember that Velcro patch I've previously installed in the helmet? Let's get that into position. And then working now from front to back, let's secure the wiring in the channel. Do the best I can to show you here exactly what I am doing. But a lot of this is self-explanatory. You get the helmet in front of you, you get it torn apart, and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. There are little tabs that uh, toggle from side to side in that channel that are used to secure the harness that goes to the button mic. Just a little bit of pressure there with your fingernail to get it to go past that tab that retains it. Okay, once you have that harness slipped into position, and you know, you'll kind of note that, you know, past this seam right here where they seam the internals of the helmet, it, it doesn't stay in that channel as well as it does up in the front. Don't worry about that, because remember your cheek pad installs right here, so it's going to, once you have everything into position, you reinstall the cheek pad, it's going to hold it all in place there. Now the microphone wiring, what I like to do is I like to route it so that it's at the very bottom of that pocket where the speaker goes. And then I'm going to install the speaker over the top of it. You'll notice the speaker has two tabs on it. One that sticks out a little further, that is going to go towards the base of the helmet, the bottom of the helmet. The shorter one of the two is going towards the top. You want to make sure that this surface is pointing into the open space inside the helmet. Go ahead and position that tab into the channel. Kind of push down, the other tab will lock itself in. From there, you're able to route the harness in the molded channel that is just behind the speaker itself, like so. From here, I want you to leave all of this loose. You can see where I've kind of got that microphone connector just captured there in the gap that is between the rear portion of the EPS and the side. Now I'm going to take the cheek pad. You want to slide this tab in the back portion and then find that white tab that goes into the slot to reinstall the cheek pad. You gotta to continue to work this rearward like so and that slides over the clip now. From here you're gonna work from the rear towards the front. There's a second clip that is right up here they're white in color. You can see them in between the gap that lives from the outer shell to the inner EPS. So working from back to front. Make sure you've got the gasket all the way over the cheek pad. 
And once you have that installed, you're able to take and fold the cheek pad over quite a bit. This is going to allow you the opportunity to do a nice clean job routing the wire inside the helmet. There's this gap that's back here between the EPS for the back of the head and the side. That is just a great spot to tuck all that wiring into. Once you've done that, allow your cheek pad to fold over. Go ahead and grab the strap, feed it through the hole. These foam spacers are included. I didn't really find the need to stick these on the speakers. You know, it's probably kind of an optional gig. I think every installation could be a little different. Every person's a little different. If you want to use these, you're going to pull the backing off and they're going to install on the other side of the speaker like so. But for our installation, we will not be doing that. Once you get your chin strap all pulled through, re-engage the three snaps for the cheek pad. Hear a nice audible click. All right, and we are done with the microphone side. Now we'll work on the keypad side. Okay, I find this side to be a little more challenging than the microphone side. You have the keypad, right, or the external portion of the unit that you have to install. If you look at the back of it, you'll see we have a couple of rubber pads that are going to interact with the outer shell of the helmet. They're soft, so you're not going to be scratching the helmet. They're also grippy, so the thing doesn't just slide off. And then there is a plastic spring clip. The clip needs to go in between the inner EPS and the outer shell. On the F70, which has a drop-down outer screen, the switch for the drop-down outer screen is in a similar spot to where you know you would kind of want to install the unit. So what I found that you need to do is you need to install the unit so that the very end of it is basically right here, okay? So you're not interfering at all with the switch. So let's go ahead and get the clip to slide over the outer edge of the gasket. I find it works best if you're kind of supporting the back of the helmet shell against your abdomen. And then pull out, kind of wiggle it until you have it seated all the way, like so. Now what we'll do here is kind of operate that switch and it looks like I can slide that forward a little bit. So we'll do that. Maybe even a little bit more. So right about there is as far forward as I can go. Now the wiring. And this would be the trickiest part. Let's go ahead and get the speaker kind of dipped inside the helmet. This clip pushes down in between the outer shell and the inner EPS. The wiring from here to here, as well as the speaker wire, that all stays inboard of the helmet. This section of wire right here needs to essentially form a loop that's going to allow you to push this plastic tab into the void that you find between the inner EPS and the outer shell of the helmet. So to make that happen, I'm going to grab a hold of this tab and right back here at the very back of the EPS on the back of the cheek pad is where we're going to install that. Just kind of push it down in like so. See that? Now, you can grab your speaker, 
the longer tab is on the bottom, shorter tab is on the top. Get those to engage in their respective slots. You can secure the harness in place. Don't spend a lot of time on the harness right now. We'll tidy that up after we've reinstalled our cheek pad. Just like I showed you on the other side now. Go ahead and grab your cheek pad and slide that in, kind of rotate it. I'm going to look for that clip and make sure that the slot is lined up with that clip. And now we'll work from back to front to get the cheek pad installed. Where it's going to be toughest is going to be right in this area and that's what you've, you've made that loop for. Remember that half of that harness is going to be on the opposite side of the tab that's used to reinstall the cheek pad. So from back to front. That forwardmost tab to engage. Come back here. Let's make sure that we've got the cheek pad on the other side of the gasket, like so. I'll fold the cheek pad over. This is your opportunity to get in here and really secure all the wiring. Do a nice clean job. As with the other side, you know, I find that that void that is where they seam the rear portion of the EPS and the EPS that goes behind the cheek pads is just a great place to tuck that in. Kind of work your way all the way back here. Get that all tucked in. Make sure that your speaker is still securely in place. Can you see that? Okay, once you have the chin strap pulled through the hole in the cheek pad, remember you've got those three snaps on the back side. Let's go ahead and re-engage those. Want to listen for a nice audible click. Like so. Cheek pad reinstalled. Looks like I managed to turn the unit on here. Let's get our face shield reinstalled and then we'll be ready to get the unit paired up with our smartphone. For the pairing today we're going to use my iPhone 10. I would imagine that with an Android device the process is very similar. I find that the easiest way to get this thing paired up is to be wearing the helmet so you can hear the voice prompts while you're holding down the buttons. So when I come back, I'm going to have the F70 on. I'm going to show you how to power the unit up and pair it to your phone. Okay, now we're going to show you how to pair up the 20B with your smartphone. Let's go ahead and get the phone ready. Get into the settings menu. Bluetooth, power the unit on. This is the center button, this is the plus, this is the minus. In order to power it on, press and hold the center button and the plus. Pairing headset. You'll hear a message, preparing headset. Hello. Followed by a hello. To pair it, you want to press and hold the center button. You need to hold it long enough until you hear configuration menu. After you hear it say configuration menu, release the center button and then tap the uppermost button or the plus button. Configuration menu. Okay. Intercom pairing. Phone pairing. And then you'll see now Smart HJC 20B. Go ahead and tap that. Your headset has paired. And you can see we are connected. Kind of test it out a little bit.
music works. Like I said, I've used this at my desk. I made some phone calls. I listened to some music. This unit sounds really nice. Okay, there you have it. You follow those steps, this is the end result that you're going to get. This thing looks really good. Arguably, it looks nicer than the $139 unit, as it should. It's $299. Look at that spec sheet and compare the difference between the 10B and the 20B and decide which one is going to be most appropriate for you. There are certainly some differences. In my opinion, they're both good for my uses, which would be just a solo rider, right? I'm not going to pair this with a bunch of other intercoms and have conversations with people because I just want to listen to my music when I'm riding. If you tend to ride in a group and you want to be paired with other intercoms so you can stay in contact with other riders, this unit probably has features that are more geared towards that type of usage. With either of them, super clean install, right? Nice package with these new HJC helmets. The cord that it comes with, installs right here. There is a little seal you pull open, grab the 90 degree end, and plug it in. I charged both the units on my PC. You can use a laptop, you can use your PC, you could probably use a USB charging block as well. You'll also use this if you ever do any firmware upgrades to find that. Go to the web address that is included in the instructions. I went and did it super easy. You download a little app on your computer, hook it to the helmet. It walks you through every single one of the steps. Very easy to use. There is a high probability that you'll never need to do that. Like I said, I've got some older communicators, some Scala, like G9Xs that are on our snow helmets that we still use every time we go up north snowmobiling, and I've never downloaded any firmware updates to those and they still work fantastic for the uses that, you know, that are intended use. All in all, I really like it. I love the direct integration with the helmets. It's a nice product. Cena has always done a great job. Hopefully this install helps you get the same result that we did on our helmet.